Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So tonight's video, I'm not going to do anything on markets. I'm just going to do a little, I told you so here, a little trip down memory lane here on this article from Zero Hedge. Snopes.com implodes resorts to GoFundMe. And I'm going to come back to this and cover the story plus the story um, on the Daily Mail Facebook fact checker. And it's important that this is, these are fact checkers because I've pointed out many times these fact checkers are fake. And this is fake news. Uh, actually, it's, uh, it's fake news uh, being debunked by fact checkers who claim that the stories are fake news. But in reality, they support fake news. So let me get you back to a couple of videos that I did. The first one I'm going to play you is from 2014. It's called Mind Control Theater. And it was about how they used the Wayback Machine and Snopes to scrub history. And then I'm going to get to my 2016 video that's about uh, another one on Snopes. But let's listen to this one first. That ha have this exact phrase. Here's one. Snopes Scrubs article on Obama's mama's picture porn excluded from the Wayback Machine. So here's a documentation of how Snopes tried to debunk uh, the photos that came out about Obama's mother, tried to say she was this actress. People had to archive that and uh, they were busted changing it. This is probably one of the reasons why Snopes went and decided to exclude their content from the Wayback Machine because people were busting them on their lies. Here's another one. Remember, there's only 40 or so. This one goes to the Bertha Report. CNN, Snopes, Marinus busted. Jack Cahill takes on David Minaris in new book. And you can see here this detail about Obama's birth and they have revised it. Snopes actually changed it. They changed the story. They changed what was said about it. It's long documentation. I, I can't go into it. So there's another example. Here's another example. I don't know if you remember who this Madeleine McCain was, but this was an enormous controversy that happened in Britain where this little girl disappeared and there were all kinds of allegations about fake abductions, child molestation, etc. Well, I can't go into it, but apparently this researcher uh, had a sudden death. He went searching for, apparently he came across too many rabbit trails. And of course we find out that all of this information ultimately has been removed from the archive. So that's another one of the 40 that lists that. Here's the last one I'll show you. This is a story that the Internet Archive is actually complicit in the NYS BOE cover-up. So here is a site, the Board of Elections. And we're not going to go into that one that, because that, that in uh, gets more into the Internet Archive. The second one is also on Snopes. And uh, this, this one video I called Evil Left. And uh, this is how Snopes tried to cover up the effects of the Target boycott. And by the way, uh, you can see that I have a Target stock chart there. You can see that Target has never recovered from that boycott. It's at $54. It was back up around $80 when, uh, when I did this video. But let's listen to this one. And you can see that we need to get down to below 70 probably really to 65 to say that there's a technical breakdown in this stock, but it's definitely topping and it definitely coincides with the announcement. Now let's get over to the search that I had of, of Snopes. And what you can do is you can go to Snopes and do a search on target. Now this is very interesting because what I did was I sorted this by date. So you can see this is sorted by date descending and you can see the May 3rd story, which is now May 12th, and the story's been confirmed to be wrong, that clearly the boycott is having a major impact on Target's stock price. But of course, they haven't updated it. But let's take a look here and see how many stories Snopes has done. 
on target. You can see target stock plummets over a million people boycott stars. Uh, source, fake target customer service account response to people anger about transgender bathroom policy. That's April 27th. Another one, April 27th, Oxford, Alabama, transgender bathroom ordinance. Uh, another one, transgender woman arrested for taking pictures of underage girls at Target. The 25th, two days before that, Target puts urinals in women's bathrooms. Uh, then the 20th, Target's transgender bathroom policy. The 16th of March, Target talking to strangers, uh, talking to strangers Facebook warning policy. And then it kind of goes back into a generic thing here. So you can see um, when you just do a general search here, starting in the early spring, it kind of just has general uh, stories about Target. And you can go back and search these, but very, very clearly, there is an agenda on the left, and Snopes.com is a left-wing um, organization posing as neutral, uh, that's how the left works. Remember, these people, the main thing you have to remember about the left is that the left, uh, it, first of all, the left is anti-Christian. And that's the way you understand seemingly inexplicable positions that the left takes. For example, in regards to feminism and Islam, that Islam is one of the most anti-woman religions that's ever existed on the face of the earth, and yet we find the left supporting and protecting Islam. How is that possible? How can they reconcile that? We have to remember that the fundamental element of all left-wing politics is anti-Christianity. Anything that is against Christianity is what the left supports. These are people, they're, they're defining, the defining factor for all of the left is a hatred of Christianity. So, for example, if you try to make... So, we'll move on to today's story now. I just wanted to show you those two videos uh, to point out the fact that for the longest time, people actually believed that Snopes and Wayback Machine and these things were, were neutral. And uh, it, it actually took the election of Donald Trump to out these people. And, uh, you know, they're imploding. And, we, you know, Trump has to be giving credit for that because uh, the left is collapsing in this country. The, the, uh, definitely the left-wing media. I mean, CNN is absolutely a, have become a joke. They're a laughing stock. And uh, but now we see with Snopes, let's read this. Snopes.com implodes resorts to GoFundMe. Snopes.com is a liberal blog from 1994. The website claims to be the Internet's oldest and most popular fact checking site. Last year, Snopes co-founder was accused of embezzling company money and spending it on prostitutes. Now you can find the blog begging for $500,000 via a GoFundMe account. So far, the campaign has raised $18,000 in three hours via 710 people. Another victim of fake news campaign backfiring on the left. A key member of Facebook's Ministry of Truth, Snopes. Now you have to remember that when the left proposed to have this Ministry of Truth, Snopes was going to be ones to check. Um, Another one uh, that I've covered before also is that Mark Botok and uh, their, uh, the anti-hate group, but the name escapes me right now. Uh, but basically they target anybody on the alt-right as a hate group. Um, so these are some of the groups that are considered the ministry of truth by the left. Uh, they hit a major snag which forced them out of business. Apparently too cheap or stupid to run a contract for their primary source of income past an attorney, the arbiters of truth appear to be in major financial trouble after claiming a vendor is holding ad revenues hostage and have set up a GoFundMe page which has raised 130000 of its $500,000 goal within hours. Quote, we had previously contracted with an outside vendor to provide certain services for Snopes.com. That contractual relationship ended earlier this year, but the vendor will not acknowledge the change in contractual status and continues to essentially hold the Snopes.com web website hostage. 
That outside vendor was none other than San Diego-based Proper Media, which bought out Snopes co-founder Barbara Mickelson's share in the company for $3.6 million following a nasty divorce. Who could have imagined that the biased fact-checking website run by militantly liberal rabid anti-Trumpers and co-founded by a cheating, whoremongering, cat-abandoning, embezzling degenerate would sign a sloppy contract? The arrangement with proper media follows revelations that David Mickelson's secret PayPal account to allegedly funnel advertising revenue from Snopes into his personal accounts so that he could travel around the world with whores behind his wife's back, according to court documents obtained by WeSearcher and Got News. And you can see the pictures here. I'm going to take you to the uh, Daily Mail article for the pictures. As iBank, com, as iBank Coin reported in December, while engaging in debauchery behind his wife's back, Mickelson wrote off just about everything as an, a business expense, embezzling a reported $98,000 the Snopes co-founder has since settled down and married not safe for work part-time porn actress, Snopes.com administrator and sex worker, as in she has a website devoted to being a whore. Apparently she's a pretty good one despite her past as an adult model. In the same divorce papers David Mickelson filed back, claiming his ex-wife Barbara took millions from their joint account and bought property in Las Vegas. No word on whatever happened to the cat. And so that's the Zero Hedge article. Here's the Daily Mail article um, back from December. Exclusive Facebook's fact checker who will arbitrate on fake news is accused of defrauding website to pay for prostitutes and its staff includes an escort porn star and vice vixen dom. Facebook has announced plans to check for fake news using a series of organizations to assess whether the stories are true. One of them is a website called Snopes.com, which claims to be one of the web's essential resources and painstakingly scholarly and reliable. It was founded by husband and wife Barbara Mickels and David Mickelson, who used a letterhead claiming they were non-existent society to start their research. Now they're divorced, with Barbara claiming legal documents that he embezzled $98,000 of the company's money for himself and prostitutes. In a lengthy and bitter legal dispute, he's claiming to be underpaid and demanding the industry standard of at least $360,000 a year. The two also dispute what are basic facts of their case, despite Snopes.com saying its ownership is committed to accuracy and impartiality. Snopes.com founder David Mickelson's new wife, Alyssa Young, is employed by the website as an administrator. She's worked as an escort porn actress, and despite claims website is despite the claims that the website is a non-political, ran as a libertarian for Congress on a dump Bush platform. Its main fact checker is Kimberly Kimberly LaCapria, whose blog Vice Vixen says she is in touch with her dom side and has posted on Snopes.com while smoking pot. So there's the, here's the crew here. This is this Mickelson character. I mean, this guy, look at this scumbag. Um, I mean, not only that, the guy looks like a male to female transgender. We're not going to get into that. Here's another one. Here's the uh, uh, partner here. This, this one definitely looks like a tranny uh, prostitute. Uh, man, what a couple of scumbags. So there you go. Uh, sometimes the truth comes out. Eventually it takes time. Uh, now we know that these fact checkers, as I said for many, many years, this is just two left-wing uh, communist Marxists, uh, uh, government apologists, Obama apologists, in their basement claiming to be neutral fact checkers when in reality they're anything but that. Uh, they're just a couple of frauds. And here's another one that's going bankrupt. Uh, more fake news going down, just like CNN. Probably will go bankrupt very soon. And uh, Donald Trump will celebrate. And we'll talk to you next time.